Thanks, Belinda and Zach. Um, Stuart, thank you so much. That that it was actually quite emotional to hear for, for a variety of reasons because I was in the police a long time ago and it wasn't like this. Um, and maybe my life wouldn't have got as bad if it was more like this. Um, so from what I see and what I'm hearing, it, it's just come, it's come on incredibly far. And that that, that for me is, is lovely to see. Um, so I take my hat off to, to all of you now. Um, Basically, what I'm hearing a lot about here is, is around the support that you're offering and the connection. And there, there was a really interesting experiment that was done called Rat Park. I'm not sure if many of you have heard about this, but just to kind of summarize, they, they put a rat in a cage where, and in this cage, the rat's in it, in it by itself. And in this case, they put two bottles of water, one which was just water and the other one which was infused with cocaine. So the rat that's in a cage by itself um, tried both bottles of water, but only went back to the one with cocaine in it. So then what they did is they repeated the experiment and they called this experiment Rat Park. And they put this rat again in another cage, but with all of his friends, spinny wheels, lots of little nooks and crooks and what have you, and both bottles of water. Now, all of the rats went to the one um with just the water and then they went to the other one with, which was infused with cocaine but they all went back to the one with just water in it and what they realized is the opposite to addiction is connection um which was a huge really le learning curve and experiment so for me what you're setting up here you know in that connection part is absolutely vital um in this process in dealing with addiction because Addiction is not somebody's problem, whether it's sex, porn, gambling, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, it's not their problem, it's their solution. And it really stems back from what else is going on. Is it trauma? Is it mental health issues? You know, depression, anxiety, bipolar, what's going on? And ultimately, we look to change the way that we feel, which is why we, 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 we veer towards a substance or a specific behaviour. So, yeah, for me... That was a big part. And, and when I was in the police, for my story kind of begins where um, I went through the whole rigorous process of trying to get into the police. And when I passed my medical, that's where I got introduced as a celebration to cocaine. Now, for me, I, I'd always suffered with low self-esteem and insecurity. So when I took cocaine, all of a sudden that just went and it was replaced with this kind of overwhelming confidence that I'd always searched for. Um, and I thought, this is how I'm supposed to feel. And I loved it. And like I said in the, in, in the conference the other day, for the Police Federation, I'm not here to sell cocaine. <laughs> so, you know, but, but it did for me what I was what I was unable to do for myself. And that's where the problem started. When I got into the police and I was training at Hendon at the Peel Centre for the Met, I, I struggled every week to pass the exams and learn the white notes. And I figured it was because I just couldn't, I haven't studied since I was at school. So I couldn't remember how to study and I was just falling asleep and it just wasn't sinking in. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to get some cocaine. Weirdly enough, I got it delivered outside the um, the, the pill centre. So that, that dealer certainly got some balls for sure. But um, I started using and then all of a sudden, all of the information I was trying to retain, it was going in and it was staying in and I was staying awake and I was flying through my exams. And I thought, well, how bad can can this be? And it actually came down to the point that where I recently found out four, five years ago when I had my first child, that I've actually had un undiagnosed ADHD. And when you get diagnosed with ADHD, if you get, if you go for the, down the route to take a prescription for it, they usually most often will prescribe an amphetamine, a stimulant, which is why quite often people with ADHD will veer towards a stimulant, cocaine, amphetamine, whatever. Um, so that's why it was working for me. So it was effectively acting as medicine and I didn't even realise it. 
But over time, <clears throat> after a while, and like I say, anyone that's used cocaine will be aware of the paranoia and everything that comes with it. And being a police officer in police uniform in a police station is not on cocaine is not a good it's not a good place to be. So as time went on, I had to leave the police um, and I did a variety of different jobs trying to find my feet. And I ended up doing what we call a geographical, which is where I thought if I can just get away from where I'm at, then the problem will go. Um, but what I didn't realise is that the problem's in my head and wherever I go, my head's going with it. So off I went to Austria to teach snowboarding in the middle of the Tyrolean mountains. Um, and as expected, we find the only dealer. I caused havoc out there. I was out there for six months. Um, so came back and then I, I um, did another geographical to Berlin, which um, was for a property investment company. And my job was basically to tour people around and show them Berlin and then sell them um, these properties, which turned out to be a scam. Um, the company that did it was a company called MRI, and I think they sponsored Portsmouth Football Club many, many years ago. And they're all in the papers, and I found this all out once I actually want to come back. But it looked like a legitimate setup. And that's where my life went really bad because back then we didn't have FaceTime, Skype and what have you. And I was telling my family how well I was doing because I wanted them to be proud of me. But ultimately, my drug addiction was at a point of eight grams of cocaine a day, which is about a 400 pound a day habit. Um, and I got involved with Albanians and, and did a variety of things. Um, but one day I, I built up a debt with them that was quite a severe amount of debt and, and they, they called in the money, which I didn't realise was a debt building up. I thought it should work that I was helping them out with. Um, and they called in that money and unfortunately they weren't the people that accept IOUs or payment plans. So I was forced to kind of run and I ended up homeless in West Berlin, um, in Charlottenburg, in the doorway of Gucci, which wasn't really a rock bottom if it was Primark maybe, but yeah, it was Gucci. But ultimately, I was there for a while. I, I got attacked quite a lot. And I broke down and I said to my family, I've got a huge problem. I owe um, this Albanian group a lot of money. I've got a big drug addiction and I'm homeless. And they were amazing. Through their support is why I'm, I'm here. And yeah, so anyway, they said, go to a hotel and get them to call me when you're there. So I went to the Hotel Adlon, which is where Michael Jackson hanged his child over the balcony. Um, if anyone can remember and had the longest shower of my life and um, flew home the next day and we couldn't find a rehab and it, there was a million different websites you have to go into each one call each one find out what's affordable because we weren't I was unable to get it on the NHS it wasn't happening and it was a complete minefield so only through chance we managed to find them, one that was affordable and off I went to rehab and when I came out of rehab, I decided to think, well, who else is having this problem? And I just started researching every rehab, what they do, what they detox for, what psychotherapeutic modalities they use, where they're located, how much they charge, everything, um, and built up a database. And that's now one of the largest addiction advisory services in the country. Um, and just to kind of roll on to that, it's quite emotional for me to be able to what the amazing work that Belinda and um, Zach have been doing to get this partnership or uh, I can't remember the term that, that we're calling this, but 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 this in place to be able to support the police where we can, because I couldn't open up about my problem. I just it wasn't like that. You know, you don't talk about your emotions. You don't talk about anything. You man up, you deal with it and you get on. And obviously being in the job that I was in, you just can't open up about it. Um, so we all know that the police is a huge drinking culture. Someone passes wind and that's a reason to go out and celebrate and all have a drink. And that's how it's always been. That's how it will always be. And alcohol is just is a drug in liquid form. 70% of rehabs are taken up with alcoholics globally. It's the biggest one. Um, so but we treat as an organization everything. So the agreement that we put in place with the Police Federation is we're here to support 
the police and their partners, their families, because addiction doesn't just bring you down, it brings everyone down with you. So, and if you've got an addict in your family, it's definitely going to be affecting you and your job. So we wanted to extend that to the family. And just whilst I've got you all here as well, and Belinda, it might be worth you making a note if you don't mind. If you go onto the app store on your phone and you search for an app called Rehubs, which is R-E-H-U-B-S, it's got like a purple heart logo. I've just arranged for all of the police or their families to have complete free access to this app. So this app is currently got 25,000 people in recovery, um, all supporting each other. It's also got a program that you can work through in your own time if you don't want to open up to anyone about your addiction. Um, so, and it's got loads of tools in there. It, it's an incredible app and you can work through it and deal with your addiction through this app. So we've just put that in place for you all now. Um, so please spread that out and and um, people can join that in their in their own space or their own time without having to reach out. But the agreement that we've got is you call us, we will support and advise and guide you and look at what options are available and help you with that process. I do want to articulate that anything, anybody that calls, we will not be disclosing anything to the police federation or anyone else it is completely anonymous and it will stay like that um 